Our invitation tonight will be presented by Bishop Isaac Williams of Zion Upper Room Apostolic Faith Church. Bishop Williams. Thank you for having me. My name is Bishop William Zion Upper Room Church here in Gallatin. Amen. We, scripture teaches that man shall always pray and not faint. Prayer is the key. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you, O oh God, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for what you are doing and what you're going to do for us, Lord. Lord, we know without you we can do nothing of ourselves but fail. But with you, O oh God, we know all things are possible to them that believe. We ask your God tonight, stretch forth your mighty hand. My God, touch in the name of Jesus. My God, we ask your Lord to bless this board, bless this city. My God, what we're asking tonight for guidance and direction. We know without you, oh God, we can do nothing of ourselves. Have your way right now. My God, we give you the glory, we give you the honor. And Lord, we thank you for touching us all this morning with a finger of love and starness on our way. We know if it had not been for you, Lord, it's on our side, what would we do? But with you, all things are possible. Have your way right now. Bless tonight. Anoint tonight. Direct us. Shield us, O oh God, and protect us. And God, these blessing, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. If you remain standing, uh, Mr. Kemp will lead us in our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Mr. Kemp, you want to call the roll? The roll call is now open. Each commissioner, please record your presence. Or not. At all. Is your secret vote? It's a secret vote. It's a secret vote. <laughs> Tennessee. Um, just wanted to make a couple comments regarding the um, Westmoreland Expo Center. Um, most of you know, Laura and I, we attend most of the county committee and subcommittee meetings now, and we sat through the legislative committee, and um, I think we both thought it was excellent dialogue, that the work that you folks did and the discussion on the thing. Uh, we really seriously do support the idea of Westmoreland's got this thing going up there, let them try some things. But um, you know, this is free enterprise at work. So um, just want to applaud the people on that committee because I thought you did some really good dialogue and 
interested to see what happens tonight in the full committee, but we support it. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Uh, I see no one else uh, on the uh, well, Is there anyone else who wants to speak? Okay, if not, uh, probably uh, send some comments to a close. Uh, report of the uh, chair. There are, uh, the Veteran Service Report uh, is uh, on your desk. Uh, that is there. Certificates of recognition. Uh, at this time, uh, we're going to uh, recognize the National Child Abuse uh, Prevention Month. Uh, Mr. Alex Bell of the Hemsonville Exchange Club will come forward to uh, do that along with some of the other uh, people that are involved. I think it may be some representatives here from uh, Ashley's place. Uh, Hemsonville Exchange Club has worked uh, with uh, child abuse for uh, many years, and uh, we're going to present them a proclamation for the work that they have done. Mr. Lamar will make that press. Come up here and face the camera. <laughs> I need a camera taker to uh, make this official. Would you take pictures? All you do is push the button. Thank you. This is a resolution proclaiming April as National Child Abuse Prevention Month and honoring Ashley's Place and Hendersonville Exchange Club's dedication there too. Whereas National Child Abuse Prevention Month is a time to acknowledge the importance of families and communities working together to prevent child abuse and neglect, and Ashley's Place and the Hendersonville Exchange Club should be commended for working hard to promote programs and activities that foster the social and emotional well-being of our children. And whereas our children are our most precious asset, and for this reason we must make every effort to prevent and halt child abuse and neglect, and it has the real ability to have lasting effects on these innocent victims. And whereas our community must commit itself to increasing awareness of this issue, and all citizens must make a stand to ensure that every young person is able to enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in an abuse-free environment with an opportunity for a bright future. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Sumner County Board of County Commissioners meeting in regular session on this, the 20th day of April, 2015, that this body does hereby proclaim April as National Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention Month and encourage all Sumner County citizens to work together to improve the quality of life for all children. And I so move. Second motion. Second motion. Second motion. Second motion. Second motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. I'm Alex Bell. I'm president of the Hendersonville Exchange Club, and we wish to thank the commissioners from Sumner County and all the uh, departments with the Sumner County Children's Services, uh, the Sunny Sheriff, uh, Sunny Weatherford, our sheriff. Uh, their men support us also in this, and Judge Brown was a little bit under the weather tonight, so uh, Barry Brown is a juvenile uh, judge here in uh, Sumner County. We thank him. Bethany uh, Brumley. Burden. Burden. She works with the uh, Child Advocacy Center here in uh, Gallatin and it's called Ashley's Place. And uh, they would love to have you come by on South Water and uh, look at their building and all the efforts they put into protecting our children from Sumner County mm -hmm. and the prevention of child abuse. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you all Thank so you. much. Bye bye. Thank you. And now, uh, Mr. Driver will come forward and we have a proclamation for the All-State Band winners uh, from the high schools uh, within, the, uh, within Sumner County. And, uh, if you're a member of that group, if you want to come forward. <coughs> I'd like to say, first of all, that I know that uh, there are several more of these guys, but it is Along the lines of what we do, there are some practices tonight for plays at Hendersonville High School and, and different places. So uh, we wish they could be with us, but that's that's what we do, basically. We're always doing something all the time, and these guys may have skipped something to be here tonight. So let's say just a little bit about the audition process. Um, a lot of times I know for, uh, you know, all sports teams and things like that, you have coaches vote or, you know, sports writers votes and things like that. These guys have to audition for their spots. And uh, basically, you know, they get a piece of music. They have uh, requirements that they have to learn, scales and things like that. They go into a room for a blind audition where nobody can see them. They cannot see the judge. And they play against every other player of their instrument 
in Middle Tennessee from the Alabama border to the Kentucky border and uh, then are chosen from different things to move along there. So uh, it, it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of practice, and a lot of hard work on their parts to do what they do. So I'm going to read this resolution. This is a resolution honoring the Tennessee All-State Band members. Whereas in the fall of 2014, over 2,000 students auditioned and 101 students from Sumner County were selected as members of the All-Mid-State Band. Whereas in April of this year, the highest scoring students from each of the state's grand divisions gathered in Memphis to form the Tennessee All-State Band and perform a concert sh showcasing the best young musicians the state has to offer. And whereas those belonging to that elite group are Natalie Gregg and Jerry Milanis from Beach High School, Joy Bresson, David Cooper, Matt Mitchell, PJ Scott, and Taylor Stamper from Hendersonville High School, Ryan Smith and Will Zeredich from Portland High School, and Michael Galea from Station Camp High School. And whereas they could not have achieved this high honor without the excellent instruction and coaching and support received from their several music teachers and band leaders. Now therefore be it resolved by the Summer County Board of County Commissioners meeting a regular session on this the 20th day of April 2015 that this body does hereby congratulate these talented students and their dedicated educators for their outstanding achievements and wishes them much success in the future and be it further resolved that this resolution shall be spread on the minutes of this body and the clerk is to furnish a copy of this resolution to the Summer County members of the Tennessee All-State Band and I so move. Say, Let me just say, as a former high school principal, that is a big honor, and uh, you guys are really going to be committed for that. That's, uh, That's great, and we're proud of you. Uh, we want to thank the county uh, elected officials. Uh, providing uh, dinner for, uh, for all of us tonight. Uh, we appreciate them doing that. They do that uh, every year uh, in the spring, and that's always a big time, and we, uh, we thank them uh, for doing that. Uh, also, uh, the convenience voting that we spent a little bit of time uh, last month uh, talking about uh, has been pulled in the legislature, and that will not be in effect uh, during this time. So it has been put off uh, or somewhere down the road, just so that for your information. So. Uh, the convenience voting. Uh, and I want to explain the call for the question because I know there were some concerns about that from last time. The, the way that the call for the question is, if someone that's in the queue calls for the question and there is a second, then there is a vote. I made a mistake by having it as a voice vote because I think there were some people who did not understand what we were voting on. And I apologize for that. So in the future, if we have a call for the question and a second and it is proper, then what we will do is we will put that on the board so that we can slow that down and everyone then will understand uh, what we need to do. Quite frankly, there were like seven or eight people still in the queue and uh, I do not do a good job sometimes of letting people speak uh, who've already spoken and other folks who have not spoken uh, have an opportunity to speak and I will try to do uh, a better job of, of that. Uh, at this time, uh, Mr. Holt, uh, you, you have something you'd like to say? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I received uh, some correspondence from the uh, Frank Grills family, and I'd like to read that to you. Sumner County Executive and Commissioners, thank you for the thoughts, prayers that you have given for our family during this difficult time for us. We have planted this beautiful hydrangea in our yard as a memorial in memory of our husband, dad, grandfather, and loving reminder of those that gave it to our family, the Frills family. Also, Mr. Chairman, that's a sad note. Mr. Frills served with honor. This body, I think he served for 18 years as county commissioner. We want to keep that family in our thoughts and prayers. Some good news that I'm going to share with the commission. We issued bonds last week. We issued a $70 million bond issuance. Those bonds were well received. We had 10 bidders. We thought at the time our interest rate would be around 3% or maybe higher. We issued those 20-year bonds for 2.86%. And they were so well received it bought a $3.8 million premium. So instead of 
actually having $70 million available out of that issuance, today we have $73.8 million. So I want to thank you on your hard work and your time. And that's thank it. you, sir. Let me just say this about Mr. Frills because I served with Mr. Frills and I have known him uh, since I first came to Hendersonville 40 years ago, over 40 years ago. And uh, what a gentleman he was. Uh, and uh, he served uh, this commission and this county uh, well. Uh, and uh, we certainly uh, want to keep this family in, uh, in our prayers as we go through these uh, next uh, few months. Uh, Mr. Good, you had something you want to share? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to make this announcement. Uh, we just actually kind of confirmed this today. Um, Most everyone in this committee is very familiar with uh, COMPASS, nonprofit here in uh, Sumner County that's an acronym for Community Outreach Making Partners for Sumner Schools. Um, I'm sitting actually uh, president right now, uh, Chairman Lamar, on our committee, and Ken, who's on our committee. And uh, anybody else here, Mr. Lamar? Anyway. Uh, our annual event, which you're all about to be invited to, which is about to sell out faster than anyone we've ever had, uh, the, uh, our partnerships and what we're doing with the school systems and working with uh, Dr. Phillips and the group and our other schools couldn't be going any better. Um, as you all know, uh, for our annual luncheon, uh, in the past four or five years, we've had the likes of U.S. Senators Lamar Alexander, Senators Corker, the governor, and others. Um, yours, uh, June 9th, for June 9th, uh, and everyone is welcome. Uh, we will be having, uh, in honor of many here in Sumner County, but one UT coach, Butch Jones, is the keynote speaker. Uh, I don't have to remind everybody, Mr. Hurd, Mr. Malone, Mr. Loving Good. So uh, just the great fine rumors of this, uh, we have almost already uh, outselling the event compared to the rest. So everyone here is obviously welcome. You'll hear more about it as we get closer to the event. Lunch at Long Hollow, like always. Uh, June 9th. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, all right, moving on to uh, approval of the consent agenda. Is there a motion? A motion. Uh, motion by Mr. Ring. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Kruger. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. All right, uh, we have approved the consent agenda. Report of county officials. That is on your desk, and that is for your, uh, just for your information. Uh, Notaries. Uh, notaries are uh, are on your desk. Uh, need a motion to approve the notaries. There a motion for Ms. Kruger. Second for Mr. Good. Uh, any discussion? All right, it, it is on the board. Notary application on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. Twenty-two votes are entered. Anyone not voting wish to vote? Anyone wish to change your vote? <laughs> The notaries are unanimously approved. Thanks, sir. Uh, report of the uh, standing committees, uh, committee on committees. Uh, Mr. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The committee on committees met tonight regular scheduled 6:30 meeting. Uh, only one item on the agenda. There are two ag positions that were expiring terms. Uh, these are recommended names from the University of Tennessee Extension Group uh, that eventually are that are nominated to the county executive. He does the due diligence to finalize. Uh, uh, Carl, uh, you can see the two on there that were grouped and approved in uh, uh, committee on committees. They were unanimous, and I so moved. Okay, we have motions. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Lamar. Uh, any discussion? Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. That's unanimous. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Nothing on the agenda for May. Okay, thank you, Mr. Good. Uh, Education Committee, Mr. Lamar. Thank you, Mr. Decker. First, I would like to put um, the Education Committee on uh, notice that there will be a special call meeting of the Budget Committee on May the 20th, and um, I'd like for you to put that on your calendar for the Education Committee uh, to be uh, presented the budget, hopefully, by Dr. Phillips that day. So he will be presenting it to the Budget Committee, and so if you're interested in hearing that presentation, please be here for uh, May the 20th at 3.30, 3 o'clock. You should get the call. Also, Dr. Phillips presented at our regular call me our regular meeting last at the beginning of this month the bid for the Rucker Stewart HVAC upgrade, and it was passed on to budget, and it will be discussed in the budget. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Highway Commission, Mr. Graves. Mr. Chairman, uh, I don't have anything on the regular agenda, but on the consent, consent agenda is the uh, letter of trash uh, 
grant that we usually receive every year uh, helps keep our litter on the rural roads and the different roads picked up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, general operations, uh, Mr. Rain. No, no report, sir. All right, public service, uh, Dr. Taylor. No, no report, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Emergency Services Committee, Mr. Guthrie. Legislative Committee, Mr. Harris. To, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Resolution 15, 04-01, uh, expand the use of Westmoreland Expo Center. So moved. Okay, we have a motion. There's a second. Second. Uh, uh, second. Uh, but Mr. Mr. Taylor, did you? Okay, Mr. Taylor. Uh, discussion. Any discussion? Nope. No one in the queue? That's right. Is it a secret? Yes, it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wants to speak. Do you want to speak? Yes, I do. So you want to say something? So I, I pushed the wrong button. I was right. supposed to Ah, oh, okay. Your fault. It, it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. You're okay. <laughs> uh, I was keeping this exactly. I, I was just curious. Um, from the Westmoreland uh, commissioners, any input, any, any comments they had on this uh, resolution? <laughs> Okay, uh, sure. would any of the commissioners from uh, the uh, District 1, 1st District, like to speak? Mr. Taylor? Uh, this was, this started back in 2010. The, the uh, county issued uh, $100,000 to the uh, Westmoreland Expo Center. It was um, done in two different payments, once in December and once in January, I do believe. And it was to help stimulate the economy and and tourism and economic growth. They had come, um, I think, to the legislative committee that they brought to you uh, to expand the use of that facility for things other than the expo center. I don't live within the city limits of Westmoreland, so my position is that the city and the uh, city council approved this in a city council meeting and the industrial board approved it so I support those people so I support this resolution. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone else? Uh, Commissioner Graves. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to concur with Commissioner Taylor. Uh, I believe it's a good thing we uh, approve this and I call for the question. Thank you. You're in the queue. We can do it when we got a vote on it. And there's nobody else in the queue. Okay, so, so we don't withdraw it. Withdraw it. I would can vote. <laughs> but if you do that, we got to vote twice. I withdraw it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Make sure we all understand that. Okay. No one else in the queue. Uh, Mr. Clerk, can you put that in the, uh, the board? Resolution is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. Twenty-one votes are entered. All twenty-three votes are entered. Does anyone wish to change your vote? Resolution is unanimously approved. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Harris? Resolution 1504-02, clarifying ownership of Hendersville Library. Somebody. Okay, we have a motion. Second by Mr. Lamar. Uh, discussion. Mr. Hyde. I try very hard not to be wrong very often, but occasionally I am. Last month, I want to be the one to admit that I was incorrect uh, on the vote to uh, table and explain that under the Roberts Rules of Order, and I try to stay up on the parliamentary procedure, but under Roberts Rules of Order, under the original Roberts Rules of Order, it mirrored the old English version of uh, tabling, which was long term, up to three months. But in the new revised Robert's Rules of Order, it is more Americanized, and tabling can be, at that meeting, reconsidered by a member of the prevailing set. So I just want to make that clear. And then, too, I'd like to make a, an amendment to this motion if I could. Okay. I would like to, uh, being from Hendersonville and wanting Hendersonville.
be able to get uh, the best of uh, what's out there for them. I'd like to see us give the Hendersonville Library property to the city and the equipment, materials, books, and pay personnel for the remainder of this year and just truly let it be a Hendersonville City Library. And then it would be our, our library in the city of Hendersonville. And I make that an form of motion. Okay, and there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a second. Uh, discussion. We're on the amendment uh, for the uh, discussion. Uh, Mr. Good, is this on the amendment? Mr. Chairman, I was in the queue for the main motion, which I'd like to come back in the main Well, we're doing the amendment. Just I'm going to come back. To okay, speak to the amendment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would, I would, uh, I appreciate the comments and the correction. Uh, uh, and uh, as many know, I wear two hats. Um, uh, coincidentally, on the committee, on the council in Hendersonville, uh, I, I can assure you, I can only speak for myself, but as the law director. And the county executive uh, can contest to this has been as well as Mr. Hinton has been on the library board um, for uh, probably 25 years, something like that. Um, as um, we, we would prefer that this remain a Sumner County library and do it exactly the way that uh, the rest of what we have city libraries, county libraries in each city across. Um, the uh, county. I'm, I'm not sure why I would come up at this juncture. If that was a, 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 a request or a desire, I mean, we could have made it two and three years ago. Just a reminder, Mr. Chairman, you were on that committee that met over two years ago. The executive can speak to this fine if I'm inaccurate, uh, as well as Mr. Hinton. Just, the only questions last month were Commissioner Hinton's that were answered, in my understanding, and, and legislated and it was unanimous and that we go forward with the resolution presented uh, before. Um, and uh, I would uh, make that recommendation to my fellow commissioner. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rain. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Um, the concern I have with that mainly is that this is an agreement that's been worked out by the Sumner County and City of Hendersonville. Uh, I think we need to put this behind us. Uh, we're looking at postponing this another month or so if we were to do that because we don't know what Hendersonville would agree to and it may take even longer. So I, uh, I oppose this because I think we just we need to move on. And, Get this behind us. It's been a long time coming, and we just need to uh, move on. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kemp. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to know a clarification on the amendment as to whether or not all the expenses, the operating expenses, go with along with that to the city of Hendersonville. Okay, uh, Mr. Hyde, you want to respond to that? Chairman, the intent of my amendment was that it would be a city library owned, operated by the city of Hendersonville. And funded by the city and funded. Without the county. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Kemp, anything? Any other questions? Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Tyler? Uh, Mr. Chairman, my question is all the other all the other county, all the other uh, libraries in our counties is done by a dual uh, we own part of it or all of them. No. Is that correct? No. Uh, McGowan, Westmoreland, White House, Mount Middlesville. Uh, let, let the uh, county attorney explain because there are different there, there are different uh, circumstances yeah. for each library throughout the county. The Gallatin Library is owned by the county. The Portland Library is owned by the city of Portland because of restriction in the land deed. Um, the other libraries are in the name of the county. Different cities give different amounts of funding. But they're all considered county libraries. I, and the county does fund each of those libraries. Yeah. Well, in addition to my, that question, wouldn't it be prudent to find out if Hendersonville wants to take over the total use of it and expense of it, expense of maintaining it, running it? We, we put in $100,000 a year now. I mean, if we give it to them, would they say we don't want it? It's about 50 landscaping, not county books. It's closer to 100. Okay, thanks, sir. <coughs> all right, anything else, Dr. Tucker? Okay. Uh, Ms. Kruger? Uh, my concern is that this has been on the books forever. Seems like I've heard this being debated for the last two years. 
if the city and the county have committees that have agreed to this, and every, uh, those committees both agreed, I don't see any point in going back to the drawing board now, because then that's another however long. It's kind of an eyesore. It's been an eyesore in the media. It's been an eyesore everywhere. And I think everybody's kind of tired of hearing about it. If those both entities agree to it, then I don't know why we wouldn't just agree to it and move forward and put this yeah. behind us. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Baum? Just a question for the uh, lead, uh, county attorney. As an uh, employee of the city of Henderson, uh, do I need to declare any conflicts of interest on this? You don't have any, any financial benefit. Uh, you may have an indirect conflict if you feel that. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Becker? Yeah, I just, just wanted to clarify from the from the county side, who was who all was involved in the sort of the negotiation that, that led us to what's on the resolution in front of us? Well, I can speak to that. It goes back uh, probably uh, at least two years ago, maybe three. Uh, the previous commission, uh, there were committees that were formed. Several of us went to meetings and, and discussed it. Uh, and then in the last uh, few uh, weeks, uh, we have tried to come with a resolution that we felt like that everybody, uh, the county and the city, could live, live with. I have been a part of that, uh, trying to put that together. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Graves? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I've got two questions, actually. Uh, well, actually, if you could let the financial uh, director, Mr. Lawin, explain how much we're funding for the city of Hendersonville, and the county, and, the, and, 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 and what does the uh, city of Hendersonville do? Okay, uh, Mr. Lawin. Um, the 2014 15 budget for the library is about uh, almost $714,000. The city of Hendersonville paid $50,000 for books, and then the library itself makes fees somewhere around about $20,000 a year of that total. And what's the upkeep worth? The upkeep, the, well, you actually upkeep of the library, I wouldn't have that number on hand. They, they, they spend about $100,000 a year with grounds maintenance and, and facility maintenance. They don't do everything. All right. Thank you. Does that, that answer your question? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Henry. I was just going to clarify what Mr. Rowan said. That the common amount of money comes from the county, and uh, Hendersonville has performed admirably on um, taking care of the grounds, et cetera, et cetera. Small problems that pop up. Uh, they do. So, and, and we have we have basically that same relationship all across the county. I mean, there's. Westmore will respond to Westmore and there's a small problem there. So we there's no bad working relationships with city and counties as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, sir. Mr. Pomeroy. Well, I don't want to call for question. I'm trying to get some clarification on this deal because you know I live in, in the city of Hendersonville, so if I need to put that out there, but uh, and I'm new to this body, and I'm just trying to wrap my mind around this. The original, I know there's been a lot of changes, but the original agreement, Hendersonville did not live up to. Now, from my math. Well, you have to speak on the amendment, sir. Is this on the amendment? Yeah, I mean, yeah, this okay. is all I'm trying to, okay. I'm trying to ask a question here. All right. Uh, so, we're spending 700000 to their 100000 and they just, they want to have the building in their name. I'm just making sure I'm correct on this, correct? Is that well, I, I think what the problem is, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, is that everything was going okay until the state came in and they looked, and the, it looked like the, the county and the, and the uh, city were using this as a, I, I, I'm not sure what the legal term is, but, but they were counting it on their books as an asset, as an asset thank you. And so they were saying that it has got to be uh, one or the other. And so what this is doing is trying to clear this up for the audit. This was this was a major audit finding, and so we're just trying to clear this up. Everything else, I think, would stay the same. And to to find the we we wouldn't want that asset, Mr. Long. According to the resolution, we would carry it as an asset. Currently, we carry the building itself and not the property because the property is not our name. The reason we originally started carrying the building was there was actually a resolution that said it was going to be signed over to the county while we originally started carrying the building. Okay, thank you. We've never actually had it deeded in our name. Or okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Foster. 
Mr. Chairman, I'll call for the question. Okay. Mr. Chairman, point of order, I, I would like to be recognized. Uh, and I've been in the queue, if the county executive would be in the queue for quite some time. Well, you weren't in the queue up here, so uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you were standing? Okay. Uh, I, I could do jumping jacks. Let's call for the question. Can, can we let, would you, would you back and let, let him speak? Because he was standing. So, can I go after him? Talk yes, sir. Then I will call for you. Right after him. Okay. All right. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Jackson. Sorry about that. Uh, I just want you to realize that if you do this, if you give the library an interest bill, what you, by default, are doing is totally doing away with the county library system. It's our largest city. They fund more, probably proportionally, than any other city. We fund all the libraries. The only library we've never funded, ever, is the city of White House. They never, they're not in the Sumner County Library System. They're currently building a brand new library on Sumner County side, but they still want to fund it as a city library. So it's not a county library. And so, you know, be prepared to get rid of Gallatin and Portland and Westmoreland. You're getting ready to open a brand new Millersville library that will be in the system. I mean, all due respect, it doesn't make sense. So, I guess, you know, last month I made a proposal that we let them keep the library. They already own the library. It's in their name. So now we came back and we said we're going to split ownership. And only one's going to carry in on, uh, insurance on the library, not both entities. And then one's going to carry it as an asset on the books. We need to clear this up and be done with this. It's been three years that we've got a major audit time. And I don't think it's good policy to defund our largest cities, county, library. I think the whole system will fall apart if you do that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right, Mr. Foster, I know I, uh, that I would come back to you, but there's only one person left in the queue that has not spoken. Uh, would we want to let them do that, and then I would come back to you. Would that be okay? Yes. Thanks, sir. Mr. Taylor. I don't call for questions. Well, <laughs> <All right. laughs> Mr. Foster, you want to, you want to call uh, for the question? Yes. Okay. And you want to second, Mr. Taylor? Yes. Okay. So we have a motion to second. Would you put that in the queue? Well, yes, sir, I know, but he was in the queue, and according to the Roberts rules, if you're in the queue, then you can you can call for the question if you're in the queue. I just want to give you information on Okay, thank you, sir. It's call for the question, didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, we're going to vote on the question. Calling the question. To end debate. That vote requires two-thirds vote. It is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. Now, wait a minute. Make sure everybody understands. We're voting on, uh, on the, uh, to call for the vote on the amendment. We're not voting on the amendment. We're calling for the vote. On well, the amendment, which is to give it to Henderson. No, 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 we're not doing anything on the amendment. We're voting on the question to end the debate. To end the debate. That's what we're doing. To end the debate on the amendment. Right. Yeah. To the end the vote. To end the vote. And to end the vote. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. On the amendment only? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, end the debate on the amendment. Yeah, end the debate on the amendment. Resolution, I mean, the question, the end debate's on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. With 19 votes entered, we have voted to end debate. We are on the amendment. Okay, now we are on the amendment. The, the amendment is Commissioner Hyde's amendment that would <coughs> donate the library property, facility, and both real and personal properties to the city of Hendersonville. That is, now we're voting on the amendment. Including all operating costs. Give it to the city of Hendersonville? Yep. All right, you're we, we had a motion to, to uh, debate. Not, yeah, debate, right, and, we are, and debate on the issue. Next we're time. ready. We, the amendment, Mr. Hyde's amendment is now on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote on the amendment. 
entered? 22 votes are entered. Anyone not voting, wishing to vote? Anyone wishing to change your vote? Receiving three affirmative votes, the amendment fails. We are back on the main motion. Okay, now we're on the main motion. If anyone wants to speak to the main motion, you will push your button. Mr. Good, you are first in the queue. Okay, Mr. Chairman, for the record, I asked Logger to come down here since I, cause I was trying to get in the queue before the call then, to uh, declare on both votes an indirect conflict. Um, Madam Chair, I mean, I have no longer to do. Okay. You, have, you have an indirect conflict, but you can vote your conflict. Okay, uh, thank you. I want to uh, add that to the minutes for both uh, okay. votes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and also, Mr. Chairman, um, um, I would hope that someone, uh, if we were going to go forward with that idea, would maybe go ahead and make an amendment to go ahead and give uh, Hendersonville the high school. Um, and uh, and take the taxes away. That's just we're not, Mr. Good. We're not on that now. Okay, I, I, that's I, I, that's behind us. Let's let's stick to the question. Mr. Henry, you're next. <laughs> we have maintenance of effort, and this never gets talked about when you talk about library. But we talk about it all the time on school. We have maintenance of effort agreement with the state of Tennessee. Both the county and all the cities have to sign off on maintenance of effort agreement. Now, I don't know whether anybody remembers or not, but there was a county down below Nashville that uh, they signed a maintenance of effort agreement and didn't buy the books that they were supposed to buy. And the state went out with their trucks and loaded all the books and took them away from them. So we're, we're not we're, we're not playing with uh, we're not playing with just trivia stuff that we deal with. Like there is a protocol that that the state will require you to do in libraries. So there's a way to run libraries. In. That, that's legal and there's a way to run libraries that would get us in trouble. And, and we don't have any problems with the library. Either way, either way this vote went tonight, you, you still have to maintain your maintenance of effort for the Hendersonville Library, but the law does what's wrong with Hendersonville. So, and it'd be that way with all of them. So, the libraries run a little bit deeper than just, just a casual thing that we decide today to have tomorrow night to have. So, Okay, thank you, Mr. Kent. All right, seeing no one else in the queue, uh, Mr. Clark, are you ready? To the rest the resolution is on the board. Mr. Commissioner, please report your vote. This is the resolution, the main, the main resolution. resolution. 23 votes are entered. Does anyone wish to change your vote? The resolution is approved with 22 affirmative votes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Harris? Thanks, sir. Uh, rules and procedure, that is uh, my committee. We did meet. Uh, we have met a couple of times. The first time we met, uh, there was just a general discussion. The second time we met, we got into a little bit more detail. Uh, there were several items that were discussed. Uh, we are currently uh, continuing to go over the, uh, the manual that we have. Uh, there are items that are going to be uh, discussed. The uh, county attorney and her office have, have uh, gone through and uh, streamlined that uh, and made it a little bit uh, uh, more uh, accurate with uh, where we are. And so we will be uh, looking at that when we come back to our meeting uh, in May. But there were two items that did come out uh, that were voted out of that committee uh, that need to be presented to this uh, body this evening. Uh, the first one is 1504-03, uh, tax rate consideration. What this is is that uh, uh, the uh, budget committee, once it sets the tax rate, this body cannot vote on that tax rate for seven days from the time that uh, that uh, committee uh, makes that uh, recommendation. However, let me point out, as the clerk has told us, is that at any time, 16 votes can change rules. So I want everyone to understand that too. But this resolution says that, uh, uh, that there will be seven days from the time the budget committee uh, recommends a tax rate before this body can uh, vote. Uh, Mr. Hyde. Mr. Chairman, I commend the committee for considering a time uh, there between consideration and voting on the tax increase. But I would hope that the commission would consider the fact that we are such a large county and a huge population of people that in order to get the word out adequately that people understand what is happening, I would like to change the seven days to 30 days. And that's not so much if you consider it's just from one commission meeting to the next. And I would like to make that as a in the form of an amendment. It had to be 30 days. Okay, we have an amendment for Mr. Hyde. Is there a second? Second. 
Second from Mr. Taylor. All right. Okay, discussion. Uh, Mr. Mr. Taylor, were you going to speak to the amendment? You were in the fall week. Okay. Uh, Ms. Kruger, were you going to speak to the amendment? Main motion. My motion. Anyone want to speak to the amendment? Well, push the button. All right, Dr. Taylor, do you want to speak? I don't know. <laughs> there you go. I, don't know. I think the problem we had this year was the fact that we had a, a number of other extenuating circumstances that really uh, prohibited us from being as, as prudent and as, as uh, open as we could be uh, that, mainly because we were under time pressure with this Tennessee state law of having, our, having all that um, established. Uh, 30 days seems like an excessive. I don't, uh, I don't know why we need to go 30, but I think for sure we need to have a timetable that's uh, reasonable. Seven days seems reasonable from the time we uh, establish it to which it can go on. 30 days seems to be a little excessive, especially if we have uh, uh, pressing timetables that we're, we'll be, need, we will be uh, in, in not in compliance with the state of Tennessee's laws. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Lamar, do you want to speak on the amendment? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, I agree with um, Commissioner Taylor. I, that seemed excessive to me, 30 days. Um, can Lee tell us what the law says that we have to do? All it says is adequate notice. Okay. And five days of publication notice is considered adequate notice by most of Five days is considered adequate. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Kemp, do you want to uh, speak to the amendment? I would like to ask a clarification on Leah's comment because that was something that we probably didn't clarify when we, we put this up. Is this going to be seven days in addition to the five-day notice? My understanding was it was just a flat seven days, that there would be a seven-day period between when a budget committee could consider the tax rate and when the commission would consider it. So that would be including the five days. So we'd right. basically just be adding two days to that requirement, Correct. state requirement. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Palmer, you want to speak to the amendment? Yeah, I, we spent a lot of time, two meetings discussing this. Uh, as you stated, Mr. Chairman, that obviously any amount of time that was put in there, we could um, under certain circumstances, obviously 16 votes, we could change to suspend the rules and vote when we wanted. Um, I believe seven days is uh, adequate amount of time. Let's be honest with ourselves. This is all because of one rare situation that we're even talking about this. And so um, I'd like to call the in discussion on the uh, amendment, call for the vote, and then hopefully call for the vote on the main motion. Are you calling for the question? Yeah, calling for the question. Okay. Is there a second? Second. We're just second. Mr. Foster? Second. Okay, we're going to put that on the board and we will vote on calling for the question to end debate. All right, the, the vote is to end debate on the amendment. The call for the question is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. Twenty-two votes are entered. Anyone not voting wishing to vote? Anyone wishing to change your vote? Receiving 20 affirmative votes, the call for question is approved. Debate is ended. We are back on the amendment for the vote on the amendment. The amendment for 30 days is what we're voting. <laughs> All right, we are, we are voting on Commissioner Hyde's amendment to extend the period for 30 days. Each commissioner, please record your vote on the amendment. Twenty-three votes are entered. Does anyone wish to change your vote? Receiving seven affirmative votes, the amendment fails to carry. Okay, I have been uh, reminded uh, by my colleagues up here that we really never got a, a, a motion to approve uh, resolution 1504-03. So is there a motion to approve 1504-03, which is the tax rate consideration before I, Mr. Lamar, seconded by Mr. Foster. 
Now we can discuss that. And this will take two-thirds vote so that we all understand. That this is changing the rules, so it will take two-thirds vote. Uh, okay, uh, Ms. Pruden, you're in, I know it was uh, 10 I'm minutes ago, but you're back. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, wait. So when we discuss this in rules and procedures, we talk about the seven days. Normally, the budget committee meets on Monday nights, and normally county commission meets on Monday nights. Mm -hmm. Is there, uh, legally, how does that work? So maybe six days, seven days? It'll be the seven days, like if the budget committee met on Monday night, it would be the following Monday. If the right. state budget met on Wednesday, then you'd have to either have a different county commission night, get a special call, or you'd have to put it off till the next month. But is it by the hours? You see what I'm saying? What if the budget meets that Monday night, they vote on it at 9 o'clock? It's okay for the next month. Well, so it's still okay for the next Monday night, right. except... Right. Okay, just want to make sure there wasn't any technical detail. All right, Mr. Vaughn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at the risk of being redundant, I think, uh, you know, 30 days is, uh, I guess, could be considered excessive, but two weeks sounds like a pretty good time for me. I've got 15 days. Can we consider that? I'm well, if you make a, a, a motion and we, get a, uh, and we get a second, I guess we can. We can. So you're making that a motion? Yes, sir. All right, is there a second for 14 days? 15. Mr. Hyde, 15 days. I'm sorry. Hey, can, can I ask a question about that? Considering your committees meet on Monday nights usually and there's seven days in a week, if you say 15, you're pretty much bumping yourself. I'm just asking a clarification about since the committees, the weeks have seven days and the committees usually meet on Monday nights, if you have 15 days in between, you're putting it at least three weeks out following Ms. Kruger's discussion, which could pass it to the next month. Well, like you said, a while ago, 16 votes could go through anyway, right? Well, so, fine. I'm just, I'm, just asking, I'm just asking for clarification. And just, and just because we didn't have a meetings on Monday night, we can't have it on Tuesday night. And to be quite honest with you, uh, three weeks would sound pretty good, but uh, if I can't get three weeks, can't get 30 days, I'm asking 15. Okay, I'm just asking for clarification. We have a motion and a second. Several people were in the queue. Uh, if you want to speak on the uh, amendment, uh, please raise your hand so that I will know because uh, there's three people in there now. Uh, okay, Mr. Hyde. Mr. Chairman, I, I don't see what the issue is with the number of days for something as important as a tax increase. Actually, to the contrary of what our county attorney has said, Seven days is too little if we're saying it's straight out seven days. What if that happened to be Fourth of July weekend? Maybe it occurred on Thursday. Or what if it happened to be Labor Day or, or some other holiday? It's going to be far less than seven days if it's a straight seven days. So why not give adequate notice to the people of what we're doing as far as the tax increase is concerned? Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I'm going to speak on the amendment because uh, Ms. Palmer, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Call for the question. End the debate on the amendment. Call for the question. Second. Uh, there's a second from Mr. Rain. So we will. There were two people left in the queue. Mm -hmm. I understand. Okay. All right. All right. We have a third call for the question. Uh, we are voting to end debate on the amendment. It, the vote is now on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. Twenty-three votes are entered. Does anyone wish to change your vote? With sixteen affirmative votes. It is approved to end debate. We are on Commissioner Ball's amendment. Let me okay, get ready to vote on the amendment. I've got to get it loaded back at the board, Mr. Chairman. Load her up. I'm so glad we tried to get the uh, call for the question straight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You You're welcome. We, we are voting on the amendment to extend the time period in the original motion to 15 days. 
The amendment is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. Twenty-three votes are entered. Does anyone wish to change your vote? Receiving nine affirmative votes, the amendment fails to carry. So now we're, we're back, back on the main motion. Thank you, sir. We're back on the main motion, and uh, we have some folks in the queue. Mr. Graves, you're first. Uh, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'm, my point is, is, is giving the citizens of this county notice. On November the 3rd, we did not give them no notice. You didn't give the commissioners a lot of the notice. That's my point of this. Whether it's seven days, 15, or 30, we're going to have to do a better job of letting the citizens of this county vote on property tax increase, wheel tax increases, or whatever tax increase we might be putting in place, whether you're forward or against it. It's all about being transparent and open, letting the citizens know of this county. And that's the only point I have on this seven days. If that's the will of this body, I'm good with it. But make sure the next time we give them notice. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Motola. Mr. Chairman, I, as you well know, I'm the one who proposed this resolution in the January meeting. And we discussed it in the March Rules and Procedures, and we discussed it in the April Rules and Procedures. And I brought this forward because I was asked to because like I stated in, in the committee meeting, there's a lot of people don't trust us right now. I mean, there is. For whatever reasons, you can say we did, we, you can say we didn't, but there's a lot of people that don't trust us. That's a fact. I mean, I know it. I, you know, I overlooked the, uh, the fine print of the call of the November meeting. I, I, I did. So I felt it necessary to do something. Okay, thanks, sir. Mr. Rainey? Uh, yes, I have a question for the attorney, or, or maybe Mr. Uh, County Executive can answer. Um, how long has it been since we've had the, generally, the commission meeting on the third Wednesday, or third Monday, and budget committee on the second Mondays? As long as, as, long as I've been here. Which it's been a long time. I, I, can, I can go back to 89. Okay. Uh, has there ever been a concern about having to extend that time other prior to this year? Not that I've been recall. Okay, thank you. Uh, a week is sufficient time. Uh, 1989 forward, uh, it's, been, it's been seven days since from the budget committee meeting to the commission meeting. And we've come a long way in communication since then. Uh, there was no internet, there was no Facebook, there was no Twitter. All of those things are available today. Uh, if somebody wants to get the word out, there's lots of ways to get the word out. Um, I think seven days is the way it's been for as long as anyone can remember, and I think uh, that's a good number. We, we, we've got to just keep it the way it is. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pomeroy? Yeah, this was uh, recommended by Commissioner uh, Taylor. He, uh, we agreed it was a good idea. Uh, I agree that it's a good idea. Obviously, if we miss that uh, day by even a day, uh, if there was a special call meeting, then it could push us another month anyways. But uh, I'd like to call for the question. Thank you. Ms. Palmer, we have two more people to speak. I understand that. Do you still want to call for the question? I would. Okay, we have a motion to call for the question. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Okay, we're going to vote on calling for the question again. The motion on the floor is called the question to end debate on the main resolution. Each commissioner, please record your vote. Twenty votes are entered. Anyone not voting wishing to vote? Anyone wishing to change your vote? Receiving 13 affirmative votes. The call for question is defeated. Okay. Back on the main motion. Back on the main motion. Uh, Mr. Good. Uh, 
May motion or amendment? I'm sorry, this is the amendment's gone. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I, I, I got to do a couple of clarifications. Um, um, I would invite anybody, that, and I think most people that are here are interested or watching, uh, have seen this presentation. If you go to YouTube and uh, search Sumner County budget presentation, uh, and I would challenge anyone to set to come up with the disputable facts. But it's been mentioned that uh, the November 3rd was not properly uh, uh, referenced, and that's nowhere near accurate. Also, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I, my personal opinion is, uh, and I think Commissioner Pomeroy spoke to this, um, are we doing, are we respecting our fellow colleagues that we appoint and vote on to be on committees? We ask them to do due diligence in committees. Um, then people that are clearly, one commissioner been here 21 years, 110, could have come to the committees and did not. Uh, could have voiced opinions and did not. Never did before, as Commissioner Ring pointed out, and did not. Um, I mean, if, if this is not political, nothing is. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, uh, and I, I'm with Mr. Pomeroy. Uh, I uh, commend Mr. Moto uh, on his uh, recommendations from committee that this committee did get together and do, I think, collectively five or six hours of due diligence and made this recommendation. I wish all those that were super concerned might have shown up and Mr. shared Chairman, that in advance. What, what's so thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Good. Mr. Uh, Price. Well, yeah, thank you, sir. You know, so just because people stood up and made recommendations, just because, you know, no, it's, it's called, it's called, it's called against the motion. I, I, I'm, speak, I'm speaking for the motion. Okay. Okay. I appreciate what everybody did, does in committee. I appreciate the fact that we can go to committee meetings and attend committee meetings and speak at committee meetings. But just because something is studied in committee, just because some uh, people put in uh, input in committee, that doesn't mean that this body should, shouldn't still question that in this body. Debate is good for all things. And that's what we're doing up here tonight, is we're debating this. So I take exception to the fact that people are, uh, are supposed to follow the committee recommendation. That's what this whole body is for, is to make sure that 24 people get to talk about what comes out of committee. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Ms. Kruger? Well, I have to say that I was at the Rules of Procedures Committee as well that this is presented in, and I completely agree with it. I think it's, there's, there's nothing bad that can come from it. I don't, as long as we're just talking about the tax rate, it's not going to interfere with any emergency spending that has to happen. There's no point in um, further making the public question. But I also take offense to the fact that this commission has been seen as questionable or less than honorable because I, I disagree. I've sat out there for years. And I'm not so sure that this commission is less honorable than any. Uh, we did exactly what we were supposed to do. We followed due diligence. It was, it was all done above board and no differently than it's ever been done. So what we're trying to do in this commission is make it better. We're not, we're not doing anything other than that. And I'm no disagree with that. Mr. Palmer? We're chasing rabbits again. We're trying to improve the situation by putting in an extension that I was on the committee. We all agreed. We voted it. Commitment Commissioner Taylor for bringing it up. It's better for our citizens. I would like to call for the question to vote that we accept this seven-day rule. Thank you. Second. We've already voted to call for the question. Again. <laughs> I think we're kind of hitting a redundant motion here, people. Let's let the last people that are in the queue say the piece and let's. You've got two more people in the, uh, in, the, in the queue. Would that be okay? Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Kim. Um, Ms. Denon, can you verify for me the date of the first notice that went out for the November? Third. Mr. Kemp, are you speaking for or against the motion? Because I think that's important that we need to stick to the, to what the motion to, is. I'm trying to get to a number of days. How far out was the first notice given? 
on the November rate meeting? Was it 14 days? I don't that, know that's, off the top of my head. I, I, believe, I believe it was October 22nd. It was a Wednesday. Okay. Can I make an amendment that we set it at 14 days and then we split we already, it? We've already voted on that one. Well, we voted on 15 days. days. That is correct. We did Can we do it at what was done the last time? Whatever the distance was out of the first notice, but that, I think it was 14 days. Yes, ma'am, but I think what you're talking about is, you were talking about advertising in the paper. This is talking about the actual meeting itself. That once the meeting has been, had, that the motion, uh, once the, uh, the tax rate has been recommended, then it would be seven, at least seven days before it could be brought to this body, before this body could vote on it. It has nothing to do with advertising in the paper. Okay, fine. I think that's what we're trying to clear up. Okay, uh, Mr. Pomeroy. Off the question. All right, Ms. Bobble, we're calling the question. Is there a second? Second, second by Ms. Kruger. So we're. Uh, am, I, am I in the queue? Or? Mr. Becker, let Mr. Becker. Finish. Mr. Becker is the last one in the queue. Could we let Mr. Becker speak? Thank you, sir. Appreciate that, Mr. Becker. So, so I'm, I'm speaking for the seven days. Thank you. In, in November, um, we did that with the budget. We all know this, but the budget committee voted on the rate immediately prior on the same day as the full commission voted. Um, so this would require an additional seven days. So I, I'm in favor of this thing. That's correct. Okay, seeing no one else in the queue, we're going to vote. The resolution is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote on the main resolution. Main resolution of seven days. 22 votes are entered. Anyone not voting wishing to vote? Anyone wishing to change your vote? Receiving 22 affirmative votes, the resolution is approved. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, uh, the next item that comes out of the uh, Rules and Procedure Committee was 1504-04, uh, that is the voting board. What this would do is that presently, uh, when we vote, there's a, a delay of maybe, I don't know what it is, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, 15 seconds okay, 15 seconds from the time the voting is open until the time the voting is closed. Uh, what this amendment would do is that, that, that the people voting would not be shown on the screen, that it would all be blank. And so then at that point, uh, then once uh, he has asked if everyone has, uh, has voted, if anyone wants to change their vote, then once he has done that, then the screen would be shown to everyone. And uh, so everyone's vote would be shown at the same time. That is what this motion uh, would do. All right, so and we do need a motion to do this. So second. second. Mr. Rain uh, makes the motion. Ms. Kruger is the second. So we now have that on the floor. Mr. Hyde. Mr. Chairman, I am the commissioner that has 21 plus years of experience that not, did not attend some meetings, nor do I stand on a train track when I see a freight train coming. You know, there's just certain things you do or don't do to make good judgment. But to this issue of the voting board, I just want everyone to realize that according to our rules, having been here 21 plus years, this may or may not solve anything because our rules plainly state that any individual member may call for a roll call vote. No vote. Call for a roll call vote. I can stand up here and call for a roll call vote on every single issue that comes up. And we can do it by roll call. So this is not going to, it doesn't bother me whether the board is blind or not. So silly because uh, heaven only knows I'm the only one up there sometimes voting the way I do, and I don't care. I'm not watching anybody else to vote. Um, but in any event, I just want you to know this is not going to solve anything but the way it is. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. Uh, Dr. Taylor? Uh, <clears throat> ever since I was a county commissioner, I've been, been in favor of this uh, where 
the vote is really not dictated by who votes first and who votes second, and there's a delay for people to vote. It's, it, it appears sometimes that other voters are waiting until someone else votes to see how they vote, and then they vote. I think it's very fair. Vote, you do your research, you do your homework, you vote with your convictions, and move on with it. Uh, in addition, you get a chance to change your vote, but that doesn't show up until after. I mean, that, that changing your vote does not matter until, I mean, once it's shown, you can't change your vote. Is that correct? Uh, I think you can, uh, as long as it's in that meeting that evening. If once the vote is, is done, then if you come back and want to change your vote, then you can do that uh, before this meeting is adjourned. The, the county meetings. clerk will still ask if anyone wishes yes. to change their vote before the vote you can put in place. But even after that, they could come back and... They, they can change that, their that vote. Mr. Clerk? I mean, same thing. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bob. Same meeting. Okay. That's, uh, pretty much what I, I want to say too is uh, once the vote is over, you can change your vote anyway. Is that correct? That is correct. And also, the only thing I'm concerned about the whole situation is as long as my, I, my vote is counted. So I, so I think I saw when Mr. Kemp did the uh, test vote a little while ago, the light lights up. Is that correct, Mr. Kemp? Or Mr. Chairman, if I can ask Mr. Kemp? Mr. Kemp says that if we get bogged down, he, he has a test run that he can show us if we needed to do that. Well, I'm not going to worry about as long as he says it's going to work hard. I, I know okay, what my vote is going to The process now, when a vote opens, a yellow light on your microphone, a yellow light comes on where the vote is. When you push your green, white, or red button, a yellow light, indicator light, is on now, as well as your green, red, or white indicator up here. If this resolution is approved, as soon as a vote is open and it starts, nothing will show. Everybody will be great. If you were in the queue and we voted to end debate, as soon as we start to vote, everything would go blind. We've got two people waiting to speak now. The only, there is no, we will not see, I will have no way of knowing who has voted, who has not voted. I do not, I will not know in this process how many people have voted. So it will, the clock will count down to 15 seconds. Whatever you're bidding in 15 seconds will be how you voted. Now, if when the vote shows, somebody said, Mr. Chairman, the board indicated I voted yes, I meant to vote no. Please change my vote to no. Then we can correct that at that point in time. But it will not show a vote on the board, everybody will be gray until the timer in the top corner times down and then it will show all the votes at once. But if somebody's not voted, I won't know who's voted or who's not voted. But it won't change the queue also. I mean, we'll still be able to see the queue. Is that you, you can see, like, just who's in the queue now is the people who are waiting to speak. However, once a vote starts, the queue will go blind. Uh, and it will turn gray and it will only show your vote yes, no, or abstain. Okay. Mr. Driver? I actually uh, think he answered my question. We, we've had some issues just in the short time I've been here with the board and different things that went on. And uh, the biggest thing I was concerned about is making sure that my vote was counted. I'm fine with it being blacked out. You know, I'm going to vote the way I want to anyway. But, you know, if it comes back on and it doesn't show up voting at all, I just want the opportunity on. to take care of that. That's all. Yeah, it will come back on. Mr. Gamandon? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think we went through this a year or two ago, and I personally like to just look up there and make sure that I voted and I voted the way that I wanted to vote. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Uh, Ms. Kruger? Um, I, I think he's right. I think Baker Rand presented this a couple years ago, and, and I was for it then when I was on that side, and I'm completely for it now. We talk about transparency and earning the public's trust. I think there's no better way than to prove to the public that we're voting in our own conscience what we believe for our own constituents than this. Uh, okay. If we need to change it, then we need to change it. But I Thank speak you. for this amendment. Right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pomeroy. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Graves is in the queue. I didn't think about us in the queue. I was on call for the question. I know Mr. Graves is speaking. Okay, so he can see. All right, well, I didn't see you have to. Mr. Graves? I just, I, I just got one short question. Once we leave the issue, that's it, right? You can't vote. One of the vote was 13 to 12, and I vote at 8 o'clock, the meeting's over. Oh. 
to my understanding is that once the vote is taken, and it is 13 to 12, now that would could be right. That's 13 to 11. That's my former principal. So whatever it is, and you come back later in the meeting, my understanding is you could at that point then you could say that I would like to change my vote on the previous uh, item. As but long as we have not adjourned. As long as we have not adjourned. Once we have adjourned, you can't. We don't okay. recess. We don't well, recess. We just well, adjourn. we have recess. Well, if we do recess, we're still in the meeting. We haven't recessed since I've been here. Mr. Chairman, can you answer my question? Did I answer it? Yes. Yes, as long as it's within. Did I answer your question? So, if I change my vote and make it uh, 12, 12, 12, then what happens? Did it, did it, did it fail? It, it fails. Okay. okay. All right. Mr. Good. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I, I just to reiterate that this has been uh, discussed for quite some time. And, and most importantly, uh, that hardly anyone does this. Uh, we don't do the Henderson bill. We do roll calls, sometimes alphabetically, sometimes. Uh, backwards, upwards, and, and candidate in the state legislature. I mean, I don't know anyone else that allows everyone to look at what, what Ms. Kruger was saying. So, it's a good idea. Okay, thank you. Mr. Becker, you're no longer in the queue? Just, just wanted to make a comment. I, I understand, understand and I hear what you're saying, the uh, uh, law director, but when we were new being in, um, you know, orientation, it, it, it we had the opportunity, it was told to me, we had the opportunity to change the even after the meeting adjourned up until midnight of that night. I'm not, I'm not saying that I disagree with the, end, the ending being at the adjournment, the adjournment, but it wasn't told that way during orientation. So, Who, what, was that CTAS's orientation? No, the, you. So I, I, just, I just want to understand. So, so it's when the meeting adjourns that that's when that, the votes are coming. That's, that's I'm sorry, that's a mistake. If somebody told you that. Okay, thank okay. you. All right, Mr. Pomeroy. One, we will address that in the next rules and procedure committee. If we could add that to get that put up, and then I would like to call the question. Well, you'll have to. The motion is in the queue. Okay. We won't have to vote again. Okay. okay. All right. So we're ready for the motion. The resolution is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. Twenty-three votes are entered. Does anyone wish to change your vote? Receiving fifteen affirmative votes, resolution fails to carry. Oh, it had to have sixteen votes. Okay. Uh, all right. That is uh, all the rules and uh, procedures. Uh, uh, financial management, Mr. Langford. Uh, number four, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Budget committee, Mr. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Budget 1505, I'm sorry, 1504-05, Air Release 2013 authorization. This is credit against authorization of Ms. Nelson's office. Uh, credit to close up uh, property tax 2013, past unanimous sum of. Okay. Uh, motion by Mr. Good. Is there a second? Where's the second? Uh, Mr. Foster. Any discussion? Seeing no one in the queue, we'll vote. Resolution is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. 22 votes are entered. Anyone not voting wishing to vote? Anyone wishing to change your vote? The resolution is unanimously approved. That's good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 1504-06, pick up 2013 authorization. That resolution is in uh, uh, your packet. That passed unanimous. I so move. Second. Second by Ms. Lamar. Discussion? Seeing no one in the queue will call. We'll, uh, We'll vote. Resolutions on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. All 23 votes are entered. Does anyone wish to change your vote? The resolution is unanimously approved. Mr. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item 3, 1504 07, appropriation of $60,000 for juvenile court, court, court costs. Uh, this is actually for uh, uh, inmate wit, if you will. Um, it may not be politically correct, but um, we uh, budget. This is new money, and it was budgeted for, but this is added money here this year because we have exceeded that amount of money because of the rent that we pay in the Rutherford County uh, at Pasture and Assessment. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, we have motions that are second. Second. Second by Mr. Foster. Discussion? Mr. Taylor. So this is for the housing you can have. Yes. Yes, sir. You know, we do not have a place in Sumner County to house them. We have to send them to a, another juvenile facility, Just which clarify. in most cases goes to Rutherford County. Just clarify. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. Uh, motion and second. So we're ready to vote. Nobody else in the queue. The resolution is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. 23 votes are entered. Does anyone wish to change your vote? Receiving the necessary two-thirds vote, the resolution is approved on first and final reading. Mr. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number 4, 1504-08, appropriation 282458 for inmate medical expenses. Uh, this is one of those non-option deals where we're paying food for the sheriff, and I submit it unanimous. I submit it. Okay. Uh, we, we have a motion second. Mr. Aikens, uh, discussion? Seeing no one in the queue, we're ready to vote. The resolution is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. 23 votes are entered. Does anyone wish to change your vote? Receiving 23 affirmative votes, resolution is approved on first and final reading. Mr. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before uh, item number five, I'd like to echo the Chairman of Education um, and the two special calls that have already been called May 6th, 3 o'clock, May 20th, 3 o'clock. Uh, the uh, Director of Schools and School Board is going to do everything in their power, which is already on the call, to be May 20th, to be, have a school board presentation. Uh, and we will encourage any and all interested folks and commissioners to attend all meetings, but specifically that one. Um, and um, uh, you'll have more information as that comes, but those have already been called. Mr. Chairman, 1504-09 um, uh, is appropriation that we've been talking about uh, that is part of the new bond, uh, 456-810 for HVAC. I'd like to say first uh, kudos to the school board and director of this bid. Uh, per what we were expecting, came in roughly $200,000 under bid. Uh, and this is appropriation for the HVAC at Rutgers Stewart that we've been talking about for quite some time. It will be bond money, I so move. Okay, we have a motion seconded by Mr. Lamar. Discussion? Seeing no one in the queue, we're ready to vote. No women, I'm sorry, Mr. Gray. I just have to do that on the this came in under budget group. Okay. Yes, sir, yeah. that particular bid was uh, roughly $200,000 under our Yes, it was an estimate. Estimate, Chad. Yes. You, you know, we can only estimate things on the front end. Okay. Uh, committee. Sorry to do this to you, but before we leave, could I make a comment? Yes, sir. Can we vote on this case? first, please? Just okay. Say, I, I will. I'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, ain't no one else in the queue. Uh, the res vote. resolution is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. 23 votes are entered. Does anyone wish to change the vote? Anything else, Mr. Good? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, Mr. Commander. The resolution is unanimously approved. Thank you, sir. Mr. Commander, you got the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to pass along, believe it or not, a compliment. Uh, I had a, from a, uh, a really good Authority, uh, a compliment given to Mr. Lawlin for his excellence in the county finance that really helped out and made the bond issue that we just did run really smooth. And uh, not only that, but uh, his correspondence. And um, but anyway, I just want to pass along the compliment of how good a job that he does and uh, possibly. Maybe what he did, or a lot of what he did, helped us to even get a, a lower interest rate, which helped save the county a lot of money. Yes, thank you. We're very pleased to Okay, go ahead. Real quick. Uh, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, uh, maybe in jest, yeah. maybe, maybe we're overusing, utilizing our uh, 
talk the question, but I, I think we need to look at it more in a, a judicious and more prudent manner than just arbitrarily I'm tired of listening to everybody talk to, to say something. But in addition to, so some of the polls that call the question uh, vote too soon, there are some people who may have to declare a conflict of interest. So I would ask you to suggest that if we call the question, then if, there is a conflict, if there's a conflict, let someone, someone make that, that point before the question is voted for. Yes, that is a good point. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Okay, I have most to adjourn. We are